Hello. So now we're going to continue on with the weight painting. But before I do that, I want to make another quick note. In order to do that, I'm going to uh, create a quick joint chain. Focus in on that. Now right now I'm looking through and all of these are kind of zeroed out. But if I go and try and create an IK handle, because these are uh, in a row, it kind of randomly selects what that angle is going to be. Not randomly, but it, it selects what the angle is going to be, and it doesn't necessarily line up in the way I want it to. So for example, if it's like the elbow above, I don't want it to go forward, I want it to go back. Now I could do it through offsetting, which is my preferred method to kind of make sure that that works. But in some cases, uh, you may just need to adjust it. So if you notice, when I put this on, it changed this thing's preferred angle to 90. So if I set that to negative 90, it doesn't really do much. But if I step back before I created the IK handle, then select and change this to negative 90 and create the IK handle. You see that it changed the direction that that's going to bend. Uh, once more, what I recommend doing is making sure that you have some slight bend in the joint so that you have it offset, so that it's easier to control, you don't have weird twisting, things like that. Um, but I bring this up because when we get to the IK handle portion, uh, this will come into effect. So I just want to make you aware of that, that you could do something like that when you need to. Okay, so I'm going to remove that. And now I'm going to jump into the weight painting. All right, so for the weight painting, in order to understand this, once again, there's a couple different places to find it. So under skin, I can go to paint skin weights or I can simply grab the tool from right here. And grabbing the tool, you see it made it so that the skeleton's x-ray, and if you want to turn the x-ray off and on, there's this button right here in the view window to be able to do that. But this doesn't really help me at the moment. The way I, I need to use the paint weights tool is I need the tool actually displayed, so I'll hide the attribute editor and everything else. and come in here and you see that this is empty. So the way I can get it to work is by selecting the mesh and then selecting the paint weights tool. And you'll notice now it shows the attached rig, like it, the parent of the mesh, the thing that's controlling the mesh movement. And so as I go through and select it, it shows what the influence is. Uh, currently with how it's set up, it's set up uh, where it's this grayscale, where the closer it is to white, the stronger the influence of that joint on those vertices. The closer it is to black, the less influence there is. So it, it's very straightforward. I can also do it with a color ramp. Some people prefer that so that it has this uh, grading color from where it's at. Um, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to do it in the grayscale. Now, as we paint weights, it affects the influences that the joints are having. So for example, if I come in and uh, paint this bottom part right here, right now the, uh, let me scroll this up, the origin is what's selected. And as I paint these weights, when I try and move this leg, everything's holding, partially because of that leg there, but then also because of this up here. So even if I uh, try and do it with that right joint, so let me select the mesh again, paint weights. So if I choose the uh, right ankle and then I paint this, and I'm going to increase the opacity. So this is zero to one, which is 100%. If I increase the opacity on this, Then what's going to happen is as I go to move the joints again, and I move this back, it has no influence on that. However, when I move this joint, it has great influence on that.
And so that's what weight painting does. It allows you to, to control what joints have what influence on what vertices so that you can control how things bend and deform and are affected by things. The way this robot is set up is to teach this in a couple ways. The first is that the robot, all except for one spot, are completely solid pieces. So I'm not worried about them bending organically at the moment. I just need a single piece to be attached to a single joint. But then I'm also going to introduce in the video after this the concept of the organic painting and some approaches to that. So once again I select the mesh and I can go through and start doing it. Now there's a couple ways I can do this. I, I want to make you aware of some of the different uh, features or options in here. For example, right here under normalize weights, there's two different ways to do it, interactive and post. Interactive means that at any time you have 100% influence on a, a vertice from the joints that are attached to it. So if one joint has 100% influence, it removes that influence from all the other joints. With post, it can be more or less than 100%. So what that does is it kind of normalizes the values um, or averages the values out to equal whatever you would consider the 100%. But it does it by you, you make changes using one uh, joint and adding influence, and then another joint can have influence. So there's a lot more back and forth. Different uh, animators and riggers use different processes. I prefer interactive just to keep things simple for me. So I know that if I'm adding complete influence to one, then I'm taking it away from the others at the same time. And so when I paint, I generally only use add. I don't use replace, I don't use remove, it's, it's just add. So that I, I have a lot more control of it. The opacity here controls how powerful your influence painting is. As you can see, that's a light gray. Um, and I can even control and say, hey, I want it 0.5. So that's 50% influence. And so as I hold down the mouse and go across those two, I now that know that both of these vertices have 50% of their influence controlled by this ankle. And on the same note, you can increase that to 100. You can also use the flood command, which can be very helpful. So you can set the value for the flood and then hit flood. And that's what we're going to use here at the beginning, just to give you an idea. So for the origin, um, or I could also attach it to the chest, but I won't. I'm just going to uh, attach this to the origin for now. I can actually isolate my selection. So I could come in with the origin and manually paint the areas that I want. And this is a viable way of doing it. But equally, if I want to increase my speed, I can select vertice. And if I select one, I can grow my selection by hitting shift and then using the, the alligator mouse or the uh, comma and the period button. But shift and then the greater than. And that expands my selection. Uh, the other one, the comma or lesser than, actually shrinks it. And so with those all selected, then I will go into the paint weights mode and hit flood. And you see that that just flooded everything for me. And so it increases my workflow quite a bit uh, when I know that I have an area that I, I just need to flood. So same thing. I'm going to come to this arm, grab the vertice. And by the way, I can expand or contract. Or I can just double click on a vertice to select everything that's connected to that shell. Now if you've got a completely organic model, then that doesn't work because it will select everything. But because these were modeled piece by piece, I'm able to do that, just double click and select everything. So with that selected, I now know I want to go left shoulder, flood. And once again, by doing this 100% flood to that joint, it removes the influence of any other joint. Okay, so coming back here, select this vertice, get that forearm, make sure that's got the elbow, flood, and you see how quickly with non-organic objects I can come down the line and make sure that everything is getting its influence. So double left click on that vertice, left wrist, flood, get the vertice on this first finger. Okay, finger one, one, flood. Finger one, two, flood. Finger two, one, flood.
finger two two flood. And thumb flood. And so you can see very quickly I can get these set up. So now as I come down from the origin, to the shoulder, wrist, and down the line, uh, it's easier to handle that. Um, as I come up towards the, the neck and head, once again, I'm not going to worry too much about the neck right now. Um, but I am just going to, just because it's there, whoop. Uh, I am going to grab that neck. And I'll just do just a flat flood at the moment. Eh, actually, I won't. I'm going to hold off on that, and I'll just move on to the head, and then we'll talk about the neck in a bit. So I will come to the head and flood that. I'm then going to come over to this other arm. And this can be a tedious process, but it's very, very important that you take the time to do the weight painting correctly because it will influence everything about how this object looks and how it deforms as you're going through the, the animation process. So right shoulder, whoop, uh, flood. Grab that forearm. Grab the elbow and flood. Get that hand. And flood. And then finger one one. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Flood. Finger one, two, flood. Once again, finger two, one. Flood that. Finger two, two, flood. And then finally, on the upper arms, or on the arms, uh, the thumb and flood. Okay, so now let's move on to the lower body. And if I need to, I can collapse some of this, making life a little bit easier. So I know I want to do that left hip next. Let's grab this vertice, double click, left hip, flood, move on to the knee next. Left knee, flood. And left ankle, flood that. And now we'll finish up by doing this other side. So once again, grab the vertices there. And this time I'm going for that right hip, flooding that. Moving down the right knee, flood. And the final piece, get that right ankle and flood that. All right, so let me come back here to show you kind of the effect that this has had. So now, where before it was stretching and pulling, now as I move it, it's retaining its the individual pieces so that there's no strange pulling or uh, anything else. It's just doing what it needs to. And so if I grab both of these finger joints by shift selecting and grabbing these two joints, if I rotate it, they can rotate together and retain what they need to do. So I can get that nice movement. And on the same note, be able to rotate that as well. So I can get some nice movement in there. I'm actually going to step back.
and you see that now everything's set up uh, for the most part with the rigging other, or with the weight painting other than the neck. Right now, if I rotate this, you see that there's a gap there so that dryer hose isn't holding itself within that neck cavity. Um, and it, it is fairly smooth, but it's also being influenced in different ways by things that I may not want to have influence with. So I'm going to end this video here. And in the next video, I'm going to come back and we're gonna review some processes for uh, doing the weight painting for something that's organic. So I'll begin by saving, and I should have been pointing this out in all of the videos, that you wanna save as you go. Oh, uh, one final thing before we move on. We still have some issues with this that need to be addressed. We have some history on here, um, and there's uh, some n-gons that were created. So I need to take the time right now and deal with those. So I'm gonna grab this edge, delete that, oh. grab the two vertices that were created and delete those. Uh, sorry, I need to make sure I'm over the mesh, not the joint when I do that. So grab that edge and grab these two vertices and delete those so that now that's cleaned up. Um, oh, right there in object mode but you can still see that there's the history. Now, if I just delete history, I'm actually gonna save this first, so save scene, uh, because if I just delete the history, so edit, delete by type history, that creates a problem where this is no longer attached. So I'm gonna step back to before I deleted that history. Oh, so one more step back. All right, and there we go, so that things are actually working again. Instead, what I need to be doing, and let me just double check that I didn't step too far back. Yep, those vertices are gone. So what I need to instead do is instead of just deleting the history, I wanna go edit, delete by type, non-deformer history. And so that actually cleaned out the, the stuff that was there. So, I mean, there are still some things on here that you need. But that allows me to do some cleanup. Once again, the best practice is to actually make sure the mesh is completely clean before you bind the uh, rig to the, me or to the mesh. Um, but that's how, if you have to, after the fact, do some cleanup uh, or make some changes to the geometry, you can go in and clean up the uh, non-deformer history. If it's still retaining a lot of history and there's other issues that are attached to it, then you may have to unbind the mesh by deleting all the history and do the cleanup, and then you would simply have to rebind and repaint the weights, but that's the least optimal route, if at all possible. All right, so with that, uh, I will save this and we will come back in the next video and go through the uh, weight painting for the neck.